Hello class, today we're going to be learning about part one, which is how to draw using a grid. So you'll need your skeleton reference photo, your watercolor paper, a ruler, your 4H pencil, and an eraser in order to complete this process. Step one is to put your name on the front side of your skeleton reference photo, and on the back side, bottom right hand corner of your watercolor paper, so you never lose your artwork. So a grid drawing is essentially placing a grid over the top of a reference photo and then using that grid to accurately draw and transfer that image onto another surface. You'll notice that I've already pre-printed a grid for you onto your skeleton and now I'm just going to show you how you can add in more grid lines to make it more accurate if you feel like you need to. So I'm marking it 0 and 4 and then I'm also going to add in 1 and 3 uh, so that I have a 1 inch grid all going all the way across. You'll notice that I'm going to move my ruler down now and I'm going to line up the zero on the same side that I did the first time so that I can keep it accurate. So I'm marking at the zero, the four, the one, and the three. That way I have a one inch grid going all the way across. The next step is to line up the ruler from the top tick mark to the bottom tick mark and draw a straight line. Another alternative way of doing the grid method instead of doing the vertical lines and horizontal lines is actually to take your ruler and line it up to each corner and draw the diagonals from each corner uh, as well as the, the central vertical and the central horizontal line. So then it'll be broken up into more of an A, a B, C, D, E, F, G, and H sections. So it just looks a little bit different than your common traditional uh, grid. I'm going to stick with the common traditional grid and begin drawing my grid onto my watercolor paper. So my photo reference image is 4 by 4 inches and my paper is 8 inches. That means it's twice the size. So if I did every inch then that tells me that I need to do my larger ones every two inches. So you'll notice that I'm making tick marks at the four inch mark. That'll make my central vertical line. So notice that I'm always lining up my ruler to the zero. I'm going to mark the four at the top and mark the four at the bottom. This is important that you do the top and bottom because if you don't, you're not going to get a straight line. So this completes the simplified version if you just want to have the simple pre-printed grid but I'm going to go through and add in the remaining traditional grid lines so that I can have a more accurate grid. This means again that I'm going to go from top to bottom and I'm marking at the every inch so that I have a one inch by one inch grid. Notice I'm lining up my tick marks, drawing my lines to connect those two tick marks. This now completes a 16 square grid that is 4 by 4 squares. I'm going to quickly erase my alternative grid with the diagonal so that I don't get confused later when I'm drawing this. And then I'm going to relabel my grid using an A, B, C and a 1, 2, 3. But you'll notice before I do that, it actually is easier for your brain if you flip your image upside down. The reason for this is because then your brain no longer sees that as a skeleton, but as the basic shapes that make up the skeleton. I'm going to create the same 16 square grid on, on my larger watercolor paper, but this time, because it's larger and twice the size, I need to mark it at every two inches. So instead of marking at one and three, it would be at inches two and six. Then I'm going to connect my tick marks. Remember again that you're tick marking at the top and bottom so you get a straight line. It's a square, so it's the same process when you turn it sideways. You're going to mark at 2 and 6, both at the top and bottom. And make sure you're lining up your 0 on the ruler and connecting the tick marks. Time to double check your work. Make sure you have 16 squares. You have 4 going across the top and 4 going down along the side. Then I would make your labels match. So however you have your paper, mark the A, B, C, D and the 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't matter which order you have these in, but just make sure that they match. Let's get started now transferring our reference photo onto our larger grid. The basic concept is to draw what you see in each box and transfer what you see from that box in the reference image to the larger box. I much prefer actually using a connect the dot method. You'll notice I'm making tick marks on my reference image. 
I'm going to transfer those tick marks onto my larger image where I see them first and then draw the lines that I see to connect them. So I went through on my reference image and I made those tick marks and then I went and made those tick marks where I saw them in proportion on the larger one and now I'm drawing the lines that I see to connect them. Using this kind of connect the dot method seems to work a lot better for me as an artist, but I know for some artists it works better just to look at one box at a time and draw what they see within that box. The reason I like the tick marking method so much is because I'm always constantly looking to see where I'm going to, meaning when I'm looking at my grid and easily you can see in this last step that I can figure out, okay, that's just a straight line connecting those two dots together. It makes it really easy to double check your proportions as well so that you don't get lost on the grid. Let's speed it up so you can see how this process looks uh, towards the end. And you'll notice as I'm working on this, I also pause and I flip it right side up. That way I can see if I've made any errors or if I'm way off on my grid or if I just need to fix a couple lines and smooth them out so they look more accurate. Then I flip it right back upside down and for me that's a lot easier because again my brain is not necessarily noticing this as a skeleton, it's looking at it as basic shapes. I would encourage you when you're done drawing the outlines to maybe go back through and find some of the darker area shadow lines and put those into your drawing as well. The last step is to go through and erase out the grid. It's really important that you do a good job getting the grid erased on the background because we're going to be using a thinner paint to cover it. It's not necessarily so important to get the grid out of the bone areas because we're going to be covering that with acrylic paint and that's generally thicker and it'll cover up those lines. This completes the tutorial on how to draw your image using the grid method.